Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Albert Ronan here again, and today, unfortunately, I don't have time to make a full breakdown for Kendo, but I have labbed her a little bit, and I just wanted to show you some of the combo paths that I found. I found, saw a lot of people were complaining about that her combos are weak and that she doesn't have many good combos, but I don't know, she seems pretty good to me. So, just to start, I'll quickly show you one of the best combos that I found, so it looks something like this. Oops, let's try that again. Oops, I'll try that again. <laughs> she, her, the timing on a lot of her combos is a little bit tricky, because you need to delay things and then not delay others. There we go. So 10,300 damage for a single dash cancel combo. That's pretty good. That's above average damage. So, let's talk about what this combo is. I do a few hits into her quirk 1, and before the second hit comes out, you can actually cancel the first hit of the quirk 1 into a different quirk button. So if I do something like this, I can cancel into a tilt quirk 1. It doesn't add that much damage, but it's only an extra 600 damage. Um, or like, you know, a scaled 600 damage. But you know, if you're getting a slightly bit extra damage in the combo, you know, why wouldn't you do it? And it doesn't really add that much um, meteor scaling effect, so it doesn't make the meteor blow any earlier, so may as well. And then I cancel into this, and then before the last hit actually hits, I dash cancel. I would like to get that last big chunk of damage, but unfortunately, it's almost impossible to combo that last, that last hit without a plus ultra. So you dash cancel just before the last hit, and then you go into the air string. And from the air, you do two attacks into your tilt attack, and then you delay slightly your quirk one. Because um, if you do it instantly, it'll just miss, which is kind of annoying, and it makes the combos kind of hard to hit consistently. So yeah, you have to do these two hits into this, and then delay that, and then cancel the quirk 1 into your quirk 2. So, and then just go into your ground, ground string, and then do the same thing that we did before. And then, I'll show it again, it'll look like this. Oops, I delayed it too much that time. And I can even go into a plus ultra if I like. I probably could have let another hit 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 there. But you don't want to leave it for too long or else I'll get media blown. And that's pretty good damage for a single plus ultra. One damage uh, a one dash cancel into plus ultra combo for like fourteen and a half thousand damage. That's pretty good. And if she does the same thing with the plus ultra two, I'll show it anyways, but it doesn't actually add that much damage. So a lot of the time you'll just do the plus ultra one if you're gonna add a plus ultra one into this combo. Um, oops. Oops, whoops. Ah, uh, yeah, that delay part there is really annoying because you have to delay it a bit, but not too much, or else they'll just recover out of it. Actually, just so I don't keep dropping things, I will just take turn recovery off. But you know, you saw that it is a real combo. I'm not trying to make fake combos out here. And then it's a plus ultra two. And even though this looks cool, it doesn't really add that much extra damage than if I did a plus ultra 1, so most of the time I'll, I would just do a plus ultra 1 after this combo. Because 14,500 damage is a really respectable chunk of damage for a combo that isn't too difficult. I say it isn't too difficult even though I dropped it a bunch, because it isn't that hard if you just get the, the timing of that delay down pat. But yeah, 16 or 17,000 is, you know, it's, a, it's extra damage, but I think 14,500 is still a really big chunk of damage anyways. Um, and yeah, that's the basic combo pass I found with Kendo. Obviously, you can combo off of her, um, her red attack, which, you know, can add some damage to her combos. She doesn't really get wall splats too consistently, and the most annoying thing about it is, like, things that you would expect a wall splat don't. So, like, her tilt quirk 2, this throw, just doesn't wall splat. It just does not. Like, no matter how high or how close or how far from the wall you are, it just will not wall splat no matter what, which is really annoying because it looks the most wall splat like move. Um, but what actually does wall splat if you do really want to wall splat is her tilt quirk one. But you have to be pretty close for it to work. Like if I just did it here, it doesn't actually work because they kind of get sent downwards, so you have to be really close to a wall. So, I mean, it's good that she does have an option, but you're not really going to be hitting it too often because it. And she also doesn't spend a lot of time in the air in her combos. So if you do happen to be high in the air and you realize you're facing a wall, sure, you can get a wall splat, but a lot of the time you're not going to be doing it. You know, if you do, land on the wall, we'll get a red attack. And, you know, get something similar like that. But you're not going to be getting a wall splat too often anyways. 
Um, another note I like to, I would like to add is she does actually have pretty good reset game. So if I just do like a few hits into a quirk two, it has a weird kind of stun where it kind of just leaves the opponent like, oh, if I put them in recovery, they recover very close to you. So they can either cover recover like onto you or like further away from you, just depending on how the AI wants to do it randomly. And she actually has a ton of hit advantage here, so I can move around and jump way before the opponent can even recover. And so this leads to some pretty easy recovery resets, because I can just... I'm way more plus than them, so I can actually do my attack before they can even recover, which obviously means I can do my attack before they can attack me. And even before they can do a yellow attack, I can do an attack, and I can do a yellow attack before they even recover. So it's a very powerful move, so if you want to end your combo instead of do it going into the top work one, you can go a few hits into Quark 1 into this, and then you and then into that, and then jump into the air, and then attack them. That was a bit of a um, poor example because they kind of recovered backwards and it gave them a little bit of time. But a lot of the time people don't strategically um, recover, they just recover in any direction, so a lot of the time they might accidentally recover towards you. And yeah, this just leads to some really good recovery resets, because like there, there was almost no time for the opponent to like not do anything, and then you can go in for a full combo after that. You know, get an easy 6,000 damage just because you ended your combo with a reset and they decided to recover. So that's just a really good thing I, th I thought I would add. And you don't really have to do anything different, you can just add it in the same place that you would be ending your combo anyways. Just end your combo in that. Okay, oops. <laughs> Clearly showing I didn't test that. Um, maybe just do like one hit into it then, or even just do it like off of strings like this if you don't, don't want to commit to an actual combo. You can keep yourself safe with this anyways if you do the second attack. So it can be good something if you wanted to just, you know, hit confirm and go into something safe like this and then go in for resets like that. But yeah, she has some pretty cool combos. 10,000 damage um, is really respectable for one dash cancel. And I just really like how awesome her combos are. Like. It's really flashy that she can go from the air, the, the air into the ground just from hitting something like this and canceling to ground attacks. It's really cool and really flashy and, uh, you know, everyone likes some flashy combos. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna end this video there. I will lab her a bit more and check out all of her buttons, but I mean, a lot of them don't seem that useful and a lot of the time you can't actually combo off of the end of a lot of moves. So like, you can't combo off of the end of this move, you can't combo off of the end of this move, you can't combo off of this one. And this one you can if you're in the air, and it's like the amazing thing that allows for these combos. But yeah, she has cool combo potential though, which is what really matters to me. <laughs> that she can actually be cool and flashy. I'll just do it one more time for fun. Oops. If you are very close in the water, uh, into the corner, there is a chance that the rock will like land on their head and kind of ruin your combo. But even then, you've still got a, a decent chunk of damage, but it's just unfortunate when that happens. And I don't really know how you would avoid that. Oops. Yeah, like that. So you want to try and make sure you time your combos somehow, but you're not going to be in the corner. Because, yeah, even that one messed up. But as you saw, they work pretty consistently. It's just I'm being very unfortunate right now. And But yeah, 10,000 damage. I'm going to stop trying to record this because we'll be here all day if I try to hit this because I'm probably going to keep getting it wrong. I'll try and master the timing and go over things a bit more. But anyways, thanks for watching this quick video on her combo pass. Uh, look forward to seeing you in the full breakdown. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.